Hi there. Now in this question, we're given that A and B are two points on a line of greatest slope of a plane inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal, and AB is equal to 2 metres. A particle P of mass 0.4 kilograms is projected from A towards B with a speed of 5 metres per second. The coefficient of friction between the plane and P is 0.2. And what we've got to do in the first part is, given that the level of A is above the level of B, calculate the speed of P when it passes through the point B and the time taken to travel from A to B. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, as usual, just give you a moment to pause the video, do come back when ready and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back then. Let's see how you got on if you had a go. Well, first up, what I'd want to do is obviously sketch a diagram for this. So what we've got is an inclined plane at 45 degrees to the horizontal. So I'll start by drawing that in. So we've got our inclined plane, something like this, and we've got our horizontal in here. This angle is 45 degrees. Now we're told that the particle started at point A, it was projected from A towards B, and A is above the level of B. So if we have A here, and we have, say, B down here, then originally the particle was up here and it was projected down the plane with a speed of 5 metres per second. And Let's just put the particle in a general position as it comes down through here. Let's say we put it here. OK. There's our general particle. And we've got to find out the speed of the particle P as it passes through the point B. So we're going to want to find out that speed when it comes down here. So we'll just mark that in. I'll mark it in as V, V meters per second. Now it's going to gain speed as it comes down here. So there's going to be an acceleration. We'll mark that acceleration in then with a double arrow and we'll call it A, A meters per second per second. Now let's mark on the forces next that are acting on our particle. We've got the weight of P. We're told that it has a mass of 0.4 kilograms, so the weight is going to be 0.4 g, mg if you like, 0.4 g newtons. I'm going to be taking g in this problem as equaling 9.8. 9.8 meters per second per second. What other forces have we got on here? We've got the normal contact force, R. OK, R newtons. Now it's sliding down, we're told, a rough plane. And the coefficient between the plane and P is 0.2. So we've got frictional force opposing motion. So that's going to act up the plane. And because it's sliding, that friction is limiting. Remember, friction is, when it's limiting, is equal to mu r. Well, we know that mu is 0.2, so I'm going to mark this in as 0.2 r newtons, OK, as the frictional force there. We haven't got any other forces acting on this, but whenever I'm doing work on inclined planes, I always put a dotted line in there. That angle in there is going to be the same as the angle that the plane makes, which is 45 degrees. OK, so I think that we've got everything we need now at this stage. So how are we going to get V? Well, if we were going to do, say, a SUVAT-based equation, an equation for constant acceleration, then we're going to need to find out what A is. So to get A, what I'm going to need to do is apply Newton's second law. 
Newton's law of motion. Force equals mass times acceleration. And I can see that I'm going to apply it down the plane, so I get an equation with A in. But that's going to involve R here. And to get R, I'm going to need to resolve perpendicular to the plane. So what I'm going to do then is apply Newton's second law of motion. I'm going to resolve, in other words, then away from the plane, taking away from the plane as positive. So what I've got then is all of R acting away from the plane. As for the frictional force, that's perpendicular to this direction, so it's not going to come into effect. But the weight is inclined at an angle to the direction that I'm resolving in. It's not 90 degrees, so I need to split the weight into two components. Now those two components would be one into the plane, like that, and one down the plane, like that. Now the one into the plane, it contains the angle here, so this component would be the weight, 0.4g, times the cosine of the angle 45. 0.4g cosine of 45 degrees. Okay, remember, if it contains the angle, it's always the cosine. This one excludes the angle of 45 degrees, so its component is going to be 0.4g sine of 45 degrees. And both these forces will be measured in newtons. So to my equation, what I've got to do is now subtract this component of the weight. So that's going to be minus 0.4g cos 45 degrees. It's minus because it's acting in the opposite direction to my positive sense there. Now as for this component of the weight, that component is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving. So it has no effect. So this is my resultant force. I'm going to take those components off because normally I don't write them on. I can work generally from the diagram I've got. I imagine those components in and I'd encourage you to do that as well. So this is my resultant force acting on the particle in this direction, but it's in relative equilibrium in this direction. It's neither moving off the plane or moving into the plane. So it's equal to zero. And from this, we can rearrange this to get R. R would equal 0.4 G multiplied by cosine of 45 degrees. And if I substitute G as 9.8 into here, I get that R turns out to be 2.7718 and so on. And that would be measured in Newtons. So now I've got R, I can find out A by resolving down the plane. We always resolve in the direction of motion, taking the positive sense down the plane because it's accelerating down the plane. So again, we're applying Newton's law of motion, force equals mass times acceleration. So what forces have we got acting down the plane? Well, certainly none of R because that's perpendicular. We've got components of the weight acting down the plane. Let's put those components back on again. This component has no effect. It's perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving in. But this one, the components of the weight down the plane, is 0.4g sine 45 degrees. And that's acting in the positive sense. So let's mark that in then as 0.4g sine 45 degrees. And then I've got the frictional force, which acts in the opposite sense here. So that's going to be minus 0.2 times r. Well, we know R, we've just worked it out. Let's substitute it in as 2.7718 and so on. And that's the resultant force now acting on my particle down the plane. Let's take those components back off again. So 
What does that resultant force equal? It equals the mass times the acceleration. The mass of our particle P is 0.4 kilograms. So that's going to be 0.4 then multiplied by A. Well again, if we substitute G as 9.8 into here and work this out, what we end up with is 2.2174 and so on. And that's going to be equal to 0.4A. And from this, it follows that if I divide both sides by 0.4, you'll get A. A turns out to be 5.5437 and so on. And that'll be measured in meters per second per second. OK, now I've got the acceleration. I can now work out what V is. Let's just put down our variables. S for displacement, OK? U for initial velocity, V for final velocity, A the acceleration, and T the time. Now I'm going to take downwards as positive. OK? So what is S? Well, we're told that it travels a distance of 2 meters down the plane. So S is going to be equal to 2. U, the initial velocity, is 5. V, the final velocity, well, that's what we're trying to find. The acceleration, well, we just found it here. That's 5.5437 and so on. As for time t, well, we're not interested in that at the moment. We're just interested in finding v. So what equation connects s, u, v, and a? Well, the equation's going to be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And from this, we can get v by square rooting both sides. Therefore, v equals the square root of, and if we put our values in, what are we going to have? u squared, well, that's going to be 5 squared. And then we've got plus 2 times the acceleration, 5.5437 and so on. And that is multiplied by s, which is 2. And if you work that out, you end up with 6.8684 and so on. And that's measured in meters per second. And if we were to round this, say, to three significant figures, it would be 6.87 meters per second to three significant figures. 3SF for short. Now, the other thing we needed to work out was how long it took for the particle P to travel down the plane. So we're after T then. So because we know all the variables now, we could choose quite a number of different equations. The one I'm going for, though, is V equals U plus AT. I feel that's the simplest one to use. And from this, if we were to rearrange it for T, subtract U from both sides, we've got V minus U equals AT. Divide both sides by A, and you end up with, therefore, T equaling V minus U all divided by A. So if we substitute our values in, we've therefore got that T equals V, which we've just worked out here. Let's take the unrounded version, though, so that uh, we don't have, it, have any rounding errors. So 6.8684 and so on, minus U, which was 5, and divide this by the acceleration, which we've got up here, as 5.5437 and so on. And if you work this out, you end up with 0 0.3370 and so on. And if we give this to three significant figures, it's going to be 0 0.337 seconds to three significant figures, 3SF.